All right, I've got Mike Reese with me, one of the best. Works for ESPN, covers the New England Patriots. Thanks for taking some time with us. Well, great to be with you, Mike. Thanks for having me. Hope you're well. Hope all your viewers are well, too, in these unsettled times. It is unsettled. But for the beginning of this, let's pretend that everything's normal and we can just talk about football. So I'll ask you what people have been asking me. Who's the team to beat in the AFC East right now? <laughs> Good question. Uh, ESPN put out its uh, latest uh, power rankings. And the first thing I did as the longtime Patriots reporter was say, where do they have the Patriots this year? Because I've never had to really do that, Mike, over the yeah. last 20 years, you know? And uh, I think it was 13 for them. And I said, well, let's see where the Bills are. Nine. Wow. So the perception from those ESPN power rankings are that the Bills are the team to beat. And look, I, I could make a case that that certainly is the way to go based on the way both teams' off-seasons have unfolded. At the same time, I'm sort of the type of person that's like, until you prove to me that you can do that, I say, you still got to beat the top dog. And uh, so I'd, I'd say it still runs through Foxborough, but I certainly am open to the dialogue that the Bills are the team to beat. Yeah, I checked. that Quarterback uh, Brady, he left, but the other guy is still there, right? Belichick's still running the show, right? He is, although... I will say one of the things he always does point out is that it's the players who win the games. And I do believe coaching is a huge part of it as well. And, and that's oftentimes him just deflecting and downplaying his role in things. He is the best in my view, um, you know, in the NFL. However, I think Sean McDermott and the Bills are a worthy match from a coaching perspective. Yeah, I, I tell people all the time, you know, I know Sean McDermott is an Andy Reid guy. But I think he runs things, my perception, someone who's watched Bill Belichick all these years and been around a bunch of different Bills coaches, I think his style and the way he runs things and treats his player is much more Bill Belichick than it is Andy Reid. And that's a very interesting perspective. And I'll give you mine from sort of the outside looking in, in terms of the Bills program. It's a program. And that's what I would link to the way Bill Belichick does it. He's building a program, and there's a, when I say that, it's, there's a certain type of player that is going to fit in that program, and there's a certain type of player that isn't going to fit. And it's not just the player. It's, it's really what I'm saying is the type of person. You know, are you going to be the right fit in our culture? And I think, to me, Coach McDermott's culture is well-established. And as you go into putting that together, in my experience – you can deviate a little bit for talent, right? And, and, and sort of like pluck a few players who on the surface, you might say, I'm not sure they're the biggest program fit, but because you have your culture well-established, those players might sort of come along because the majority of what you have is aligned with that culture. I'm sure you get asked this all the time with the news, the biggest news in the NFL this year. Were you surprised? that Brady left? Well, I was, you know, I was. And, and look, whenever you become a free agent, anything's possible. I, I'll tell you why I was surprised is I really feel like New England for him was still the best fit. And I really felt like the Patriots with Brady was the best fit for the team. And so because I really measured it out that way, I thought both sides would ultimately come to that realization. They didn't. And so that's what led me to the surprise I said 80% chance when free agency began that I thought, you know, or the off season began that I thought Brady would be back. So I left it open 20% that he could go. And I'd say by the time free agency began, like the, that legal negotiating period, you know, I lowered the odds because I figured if they hadn't got a deal by that point, the odds of it happening were going to be a little bit longer. You know, and I thought this, Mike, I, when I looked at the circumstances, the whole country, the whole world is in now, if that was going to play in any direction for a guy like Tom Brady, so many years in one system, to now have an off, system, off season of total uncertainty in a new place with new coaches, I thought that might push him back even more to Foxborough. But I guess right. once he had made up his mind, he was going to go. That's a good point. And I think another thing for me was just the idea of you know, that it matter, legacy matters to him and the idea of being a one uniform player. You know, I really thought that maybe that was something that was something very significant in his mind. I obviously didn't measure that uh, correctly. When you look at the, what this franchise has accomplished, incredible. 
Um, is there a part of the fan base, and I guess maybe it could extend to the media too, that is excited a little bit about seeing what it will be like without Brady? Not that they're rooting for him to go, yeah. but you've had it, like you said. You, you didn't even bother to look before. You just knew where New England was going to be. There's uncertainty, yeah. and now they can be almost a little bit of an underdog. Yeah, well, I would say like this, Mike, like a really <laughs> small segment that's excited about it. I think most people, um, you know, it was emotional for a yeah. lot of fans to see him go. And I would say those that sort of remove the emotion by taking a cue from Bill Belichick, who always says, you know, remove the emotion, just do what's best for the team. There are some that say, look, paying a 43-year-old quarterback 50 million guaranteed over the next two years when there's no roadmap for anyone having ever done that before, they say this is probably a good move, you know, to, to turn the page. But to me, a small mon minority in that category. Yeah. Um, Jared Stenham, we don't know anything about him, really. I mean, Bills fans, NFL fans really don't. Tell us something about this guy, if he is the guy or gets a shot to be the guy this year for New England. Couple things stand out, Mike. Married very mature, you know, beyond his 23 years, uh, came into the Patriots and made an immediate impression in terms of this isn't like a standard rookie. He clearly has uh, something about him where, you know, he fits. So that, and, and at that position, we know how important that is at quarterback. Didn't miss a practice all year and had the best preseason of any rookie quarterback in Bill Belichick's 20 years as head coach. What does that mean going forward? Like, we don't really know. It's preseason, right? But those were some of the positive signs that the Patriots saw that led them to keep him as their number two quarterback last year over Brian Hoyer, the veteran. So they saw enough in him to say, look, that number two quarterback spot, we're going to entrust it to a rookie from Auburn. And to me, that's significant. I sort of relate it to, like, that's your vice president. Like, you want to make sure you got a good vice president because – you know, next thing you know, that person could be leading your country and, and not to take it in a different direction. But I always felt like that that decision was significant because it reflected to me what the Patriots brain trust saw early in Jarrett Stidham. So you've got the young guy, the draft pick. You've got the veteran in Hoyer. Do you see them at all going back into the free agent market? It's such a strange year. Yeah. I, it seems like such an odd fit, the big guys who are out there like Winston yeah. and Cam Newton. Strange fit for Foxborough yeah. based on the style of play that those guys have done. Do you see any of that happening? I don't, Mike. And I think part of the reason why is financially they are not in a great place. They are less than $1 million uh, of cap space right now. So they're really handcuffed with the moves they can make financially. They have $26 million worth of dead cap space that's players no longer on their team that they have to account for on their salary cap and they still have 23 roster spots to fill so as we know with the cap like you can manipulate that a little bit to create space but to me a guy like cam newton or Jameis winston i mean they're going to command more money you know on top of whatever you already need to create and that's why i think before we talk about style of play and anything like that, I think it's unlikely just from a pure financial standpoint. Uh, we started talking a little bit about the circumstances we're in. What are you hearing from people around the league? I mean, this is such an odd time. I mean, we, we'll get through the draft, but that's yeah. not on the football field. What are you hearing about anybody's thoughts on what could happen down the line when anybody hopes to get players together to start planning for this upcoming season? Well, everyone is saying you just have to go day to day. And this is a good reminder as to what's truly important. And football obviously isn't at the top of that list. And some of the people I've spoken with are concerned that the, the football season, or at least parts of it, could be threatened. And so right now, they say it's too early to tell. Just go day to day and hope for the best. But I, I've, I really feel like from what I, the people I talk to, all scenarios are still in play uh, as we talk today. Uh, for you, for ESPN, what's this been like for you? I mean, we're all adapting to doing things by technology, and the NFL is really the only thing that's still somewhat out there. What's it been like for you? Well, so at home, uh, we have an 11-year-old daughter and a soon-to-be 8-year-old son. 
So I would start there uh, in that we're working full time uh, as both a reporter and educator. So we have two <laughs> jobs and I will tell you which one is harder. <laughs> the second one. Yeah. <laughs> God bless our teachers, Mike, right? And so um, that's been the hardest part, to be honest. The, the work stuff is very much the same for me. I mean, I'm still writing articles. I'm still going on TV through the technology like we are here. Uh, I would say the hardest part is getting out those lesson plans for the kids and making sure that they're up to speed with whatever they need to do school-wise and just um, sort of balancing the two of those things. Well, we wish you the best with all of that. And like you said, everybody is in the same boat and we're all missing sports, but I think you made a good point that maybe at some point, obviously realizing other things are more important. When we get to that point where it's safety and everybody feels comfortable, yeah. man, we really are gonna appreciate the games when they come back, aren't we? So well said, and I'll add on to that. I'm gonna appreciate that trip to Western New York, which is honestly one of my favorites as long, Mike, as it's preferably a little bit earlier in the season. Can we well, do that? Maybe yeah, a little earlier. Because I was thinking about if the season gets pushed back, we were talking about it this morning. Imagine games here, or yeah. even in Foxborough, if you're playing in February, regular season games. But maybe that won't be the case. Maybe it'll be a nice, cool Sunday night evening game. How about that? In order I, to I would love it. And I always stay, I stay at the same place, you know, uh, at the Marriott and Millersport, you know, right, right in Amherst there, you know, and it's like, I love the routine. It's like 20 plus years running, same hotel, you know, love the airport, get the quick rental car, you know, it's easy to walk right in there. And Trattoria Aroma is one of my favorite restaurants. And so I go there and it, I just love the consistency and the routine and the people. Well, and the Patriots have loved the routine, too, because they've yeah, almost true. always come out with a win. But we'll see how it goes for this year. Hey, Mike, thanks very much for your time. We really appreciate it. And we'll look forward to reading your stuff on ESPN and seeing you on ESPN TV in whatever form of technology. Sounds great. Thanks for having me.